What's going on there folks? It is Earthmaster here on the live stream. I'm going to do a quick update video regarding some very, very interesting, interesting activity taking place down here towards the southern end of the globe. And uh, this all comes after a pretty large 7.6, uh, 7.5 downgraded once again by the USGS around the South Sandwich Islands. I want to show you guys what's going on down here. Some pretty crazy activity. Not too often do we see something like this and this far out. Okay, so you got the, uh, the Scotia Sea. There's just another uh, uh, earthquake notification on my phone, which I forgot to turn off. So anyway, yeah, check this out, folks. We got a swarm of activity kicking off down here along the uh, South Sandwich Trench, the Scotia uh, area. A lot of plate dynamics here at work. This is kind of a subduction zone, um, if you will, between, uh, well, between, uh, uh, what do we got? The, the uh, South American plate and the Antarctic plate, plate over here. I'm gonna have to look at this here in just a second. We'll check out the specific dynamics of this plate here in, in a second, but I wanna show you guys what's going on here. If you look up here to the north, we got a large 7.5 that struck this morning, 7.6 originally. Uh, there was no tsunami statement with this, um, and I don't believe there is any right now. Of course, that was much, much earlier. I don't believe there was one even issued. But, uh, man, these guys have been pretty slow with uh, their network lately. Uh, we'll get back to them here in a minute. But check out this line of earthquake activity extending well over 100 kilometers. We're talking maybe, if you count from up here and you look at the scale down here on the bottom, we're talking about maybe 400 500 kilometer long stretch of large earthquakes taking place down here. The largest one so far has been that 7.5, but man, you cannot ignore all this activity has taken place away from the main earthquake. Normally we'll see aftershocks around the main earthquake up to 100 kilometers or so within the region, but we're talking hundreds of kilometers away from the main quake. And these are not just wimpy, wimpy little um, earthquakes down here. We're talking about low sixes, lots and lots of fives, and I'm sure many, many more that's not being accounted for. So we should be on heightened alert here for potentially something much larger in this region, not only bigger than the 7.5. Um, I wouldn't doubt it if we see something very similar within this region here. Uh, it's all kind of, kind of working its way down south, migrating here to the south end of this area. Um, here's the South Sandwich Fracture Zone. This area is capable of seeing a pretty large uh, uh, quake as well. Let's go ahead and check out some of the, uh, well, let's go check out some historical earthquake activity um, in this region. It is no doubt a seismically active area. Um, as you can see here on this map, let's go ahead and bring up the key. Uh, give you guys an idea of 4.5 and above. 8.0 magnitude is gonna be in the larger circle. Um, and the depths uh, are going to be darker. The deeper or the darker the circle, the deeper uh, the earthquake in this area. A subduction zone, of course, right? A lot, of a lot of shallow quakes up here as well. This only goes back to 1900, 2015 um, time frame. But uh, right around, where is that 7.5 that struck? That was kind of up here. Let me, let me go back here and click specifically on that one so we can have a reference here and see... Uh, the activity kind of struck out here in the in the uh, uh, subduction zone, no doubt, but kind of in an area where we don't see well, where we haven't seen a whole lot of cluster in the past, far as the past 115 years ago, 120 years, according to this key up here. But there is some big ones out there. There's no doubt sixes and sevens kicking off out here. Um, and further down south, obviously, you can see some more deeper movement into the uh, way deeper. We're talking about uh, 70 to 300 kilometers depth for some, some of these earthquakes. Looks like deeper ones over here to the west as you go further down into the subduction zone. Um, so a lot of deep movement has taken place out here historically and larger uh, between 7.0 and 8.0 magnitude earthquakes in this area. So that's why I can't rule out something much larger happening within that, well, within that area that we're seeing right now, just over the last few hours, folks. This, this doesn't happen. If I seen something like this 
anywhere else along Japan or the West Coast or the subduction zone of the Peru Chile Trench, I'd be like, okay, this is building up to something big. So, let's go back over here. I find out I got too many maps pulled up here, but that's okay. So the swarming area, kind of following that pattern right here along the subduction zone. Um, I don't believe we've seen, let's check out the depth of some of these earthquakes here. Uh, 69, 65, 35, 10, um, 67. There's a lot of them around 70 to 70 to 35 kilometers below the surface. So we haven't really triggered too much deeper movement here. Uh, I'm talking much deeper into the, um, the East Scotia ridges here, the subduction zone, but it's possible. It's very possible with this type of scenario, this type of setup. I mean, you just don't see that too often. So there's 50, trying to, trying to get a scale, an exact scale. 100, 200, about 300, 400, probably 450, 500 kilometer long stretch of swarms of, of earthquakes. And all this has happened following the 7.5. So you can't tell me that something hasn't been woken up down here. Um, let's hope it ends with that, but we're looking at a little bit of migration further south here into the uh, South Sandwich uh, Fracture Zone. A little bit of different setup, but still a dy dynamic, dynamically um, enhanced area when it comes to the plate dynamics in this region. Uh, let me bring up show you a simple plate tectonic map of this area down here zoom in uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, see if I can find something a little bit on the not so complicated side oh here we go here's a kind of a good one um, so okay hold on a second here Kind of want to bring this up a little bit larger, folks. So hold on one second. Uh, do, 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 do. Kick this up here. Uh, is it in here? Nope. Let's see where, where it went to. I spent all day looking through all my images. I got to clean out my computer a little bit more when it comes to the uh, uh, bunch of images I have on here. Uh, let's see if this is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so let me pop this open here. Uh, phew. Okay. But you guys aren't able to see the cursor now. But go ahead and, and take a look a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom into this area down here. South America. You got the sandwich, right? Kind of shows the sandwich on there. Sandwich Islands. Not the best quality uh, map here, but kind of give you guys a little idea of that subduction zone. The subduction zone is right there where it says sandwich. You got the blue cold front looking system right there with the uh, left arrow pointing. That's a subduction zone. A little bit further south uh, where the green area is south of the subduction zone. A little bit different plate boundary. Uh, a little bit of, of uh, looks like left right possibly. Uh, doesn't really show that. Well, it does show some of the arrows on here. Uh, with the general uh, motion of the plates. So all that action kind of moving towards the west, southwest, further towards the Scotia plate, the Antarctica plate, getting in on some of that action as well. That's why I think we could see something uh, triggering just south there on that green zone, that green fracture zone that extends west to east at the bottom of the blue cold front looking system, which is the subduction zone area. Um, all that movement kind of going over there in that area. So I think, uh, oops, I almost ended the, uh, <laughs> I almost ended the whole OBS software, which wouldn't have been good. So something to definitely watch here, folks, very closely as this swarm of activity is just uh, ramping up, man, ramping up and just a, a train of activity. It's amazing. You just don't see that activity all that often. You do sometimes along the uh, regions here, Samoa and uh, Solomon Islands, but man, look at this. This thing almost covers the entire subduction zone here of the, uh, the Scotia Plate area. 
see that written there on the map? Let's see what this one is. Uh, that one's even worse. Here's a little general direction of the plates. Uh, you got the Scotia plate, South American plate, and the Antarctic plate. They're all kind of mingling together, creating a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of activity in that region, uh, which could I, th I think that possibly could put uh, a little bit of activity further up north here into South America on the target list. Uh, but we'll see what takes place here in this region today. Uh, there has been quite a bit of movement uh, in the South America area along the Peru-Chile Trench. Uh, looks like, uh, when was that activity? All of that activity in the South America region looks like prior to the 7.5 that struck this morning or uh, a little bit ago um, in that area. But uh, we definitely want to keep an eye on that, folks. Six, I mean, a bunch of sixes. I just... These are not aftershocks. These are uh, buildup of, of anything of further pressure in this region. Uh, so be on heightened alert in this area. I'll go ahead and look at, we've seen the South America activity. Uh, a lot of deeper movement over here in the Fiji Islands area. Uh, most of that, uh, most of that looks like prior to the 7.5. Uh, that struck down here. A little bit further movement along the coast in the Cascadia subduction zone, seeing some ridge uh, movement in the Gorda ridges out here in the Pacific, just offshore. Uh, looks like uh, some shallower quakes along the ridges area, still in a, a sign of some uh, pressure out in that area. Also continued deep movement here at the southern end of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, 2.8. Uh, that one struck 0803, so that one was uh, uh, that one was actually before the 7.5 down here. Kind of look, I kind of like to look at other plates uh, thousands of miles away and see what type of uh, adjustments and whatnot uh, larger earthquakes make um, in a uh, in a separate plate uh, far away, uh, which is it's just a giant. The Earth is basically a giant cracked egg uh, that moves around. Of course, an egg. Right? The pieces don't shift around like they do here on Earth, and they don't get recycled like they do here on Earth. But it all kind of mingles around and affects one another. Um, even small quakes do to an extent, but these larger ones, no doubt, can uh, definitely uh, put a lot of strain on certain areas. And looking at the general plate motion here, um, this area right here, and looking at the trail of activity, this here area is definitely on target for potentially something larger um, hopefully not but we'll keep an eye on that uh, and then from there I, I bet we need to be watching this South America and the Peru Chile Trench here with all this activity over the last couple days here in this region uh, and now further build up of pressure in that area um, soon something could possibly hit in that area uh, I do want to show you guys the Yellowstone overviews of when that 7.5 7.6 hit Right? This is not Yellowstone activity kicking up, folks, so no need to worry. Um, but I also do like to see what these bigger quakes do to the Yellowstone area. We've seen swarms kick up following a large quake um, off the coast of Japan or off the coast of uh, uh, Taiwan or anywhere. Alaska? Alaska kind of triggered that, uh, that 8.2 that we had, kind of triggered a little swarm in this area, uh, but it has since died down. But looking at this map here, this here is the 7.5. Look at that. Look at all those waves right there. This is, shows you right here how sensitive sensitive the equipment is when it comes to picking up the P and surface waves out here. Pretty uh, pretty awesome looking, considering that earthquake struck way down there uh, near the South Sandwich Islands. Much, I mean, a considerable distance from Yellowstone National Park. Um, so, kind of watching it. Uh, it did show up on quite a few stations. On some, it didn't. That tells me right there that the activity or that the uh, sensitivity on these stations are not really amped up to where they should be when it comes to monitoring earthquake activity. But each one is separate and individual of each other, and there could be a reason behind that. Maybe they don't want to um, blow blow the uh, seismographs away with geyser activity or um, other geothermal type activity, like here in Old Faithful, right? We know that it goes off um, quite a bit. I can't remember the... Uh, sequence of um, minutes that it does pop off uh, Old Faithful but they have it kind of toned down to where it's not blowing away 
uh, the seismographs here with the uh, every time the geyser goes off. But it certainly picked up some of those uh, looks like some of those S waves in this in this reading with those very wavy type lines. Uh, sometimes those P and S waves can travel around the globe. So. I would definitely be on guard, folks, for, for potential further movement in this region. It's just, it's hard to ignore all this activity, man. I'm gonna see if I can pull up a station down here, a live seismograph station, and add it on to our live view of the seismographs um, that, we're seeing, that we're seeing here on the screen right now. Um, I can still see some waviness in the patterns of the seismographs. Uh, hours later from that 7.5 that struck, kind of shaking the earth, earth up pretty good. Uh, between the 8.2 that struck in Alaska and uh, well all the activity off the coast of the Philippines uh, man just the earth uh, definitely vibrating a little bit over the last couple days so all right folks uh, we will be back a little bit later with a full and complete update video unless something major happens between now and now and then uh, till then we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight with the uh, update video